Down to like 70 or 100. Smile for the camera. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. talking about how to get gold out of black sand. Now I know that sounds simple, but depending on how big that gold is, it can be real tricky. And so, exactly what is it? Well, it's actually a conglomerate of things, but the foundation of black sand is going to be made up of magnetite and hematite. Most of your um, iron bearing minerals are found in igneous and metamorphic rock. Uh, that's where most of your gold is going to be found too. Remember you got three types of rocks. You got sedimentary, igneous, and metamorphic. Most of your gold is going to be found in these two types right here. There's a reason why classification is important, that's on the next page, but you're going to classify all the way down as far as you can. Now this is a 60, I can take it down to 100 if I want, but I think 60 is as far enough as I want to go today. Now, this is something I have to go over real slow because it's very important, no matter who you are or what you're doing when you're out gold mining. Looking at black sand while my gold's over here because the water squished it all over to the side. That's why the, the material has to be the same size when you're panning. That's why you classify it. If I can get that out of one pan, oh, I'm coming back with a trawl. Because I know in one day I can get about an ounce of gold. No yeah. problem. An ounce? Yeah, if I can get that out of one pan. If, if you shovel it. Yeah. If he doesn't jump in the trawl. <laughs> no, <you're gonna> <laughs> and for my 20 plus years of doing it, I like these 10 ways. They work for me. If you do this, it is a world of difference in getting that small, small gold out. And we're going to run it and I'm going to show you how it works. Now once again, this has got to be level, very, very important, and your water flow, very, very important too. If one of these is out of kilter, you're going to lose gold. If everybody wants to move into it and see it, yep. you, you just forget all of that. The question was is, when you buy the kit, it says keep the water a half inch below the top of the rib. Do you just throw that out the window or do you go buy it? I say throw it out the window. You're going to get a feel for what you can and can't do with this thing. So, I'm going to make sure he's empty so you know that I'm not salting it. We're going to run him too. Same principle. Classify your material out, run it through. Now, you can run this guy dry. That guy, you should run wet. I'm upside down. And that's why I say you have to work with these guys. There's no set rule. Like almost that material is almost down to where it should be. Now you're going to get aggressive with it like this. It comes with these legs. Wash it out gently about three or four times. Then you're going to bring the material back in. Black sand will stay in the bottom. There you go. Circle. And then you're going to shake again. Are you just getting it? And then you're going to tilt. Oh, yes. More? More? Because you've got not much material left. More? Okay, now you're going to run the water again, like we were doing earlier. Just like that. See the black sand forming down in that first groove? Yes. That's about as far as I like to go. Hey, Joe. That's me. Okay, uh, gold cubes. If you buy one of these, I like to get it with a hopper. It comes with an optional hopper. Uh, they both have their own pumps. If you do get one, make sure you get the 15 and the 2,000 uh, gallon per hour pumps. Okay. The Vortex Sluice. Anybody hear this? Anybody? No? Gold well drop Vortex? Okay. One? One? That's it? He's oh. rubber over it. And you put the fine gold that's been classified. Like I told you. And the gold will actually sit on top of that okay. fluid bed. Now, I'm not going to go into this too much because this is probably something that most of you are never going to use. Um, a lot of mining companies use jigs. I know, I know. I love shaker tape. This is more up my alley right here. Um, Keen makes one called an RP4. Fantastic machine. You can use a ceramic and it's going to have to be big enough. It should be twice the size of the material you're running. So if you got 10 grams to run, you better have a, um, a 20 gram crucible because sometimes if, when you're heating up that flux, it'll actually start to bubble and raise. And if your crucible is not deep enough, they're not hard to make. If you guys you know, need information, either leave me a comment or I'll get with you after the, the presentation. Um, the hardest part is the refractory. It's expensive, it takes time to set up. It took us two weeks to get ours to set up. If you run that furnace without having that stuff cured, guess what, it's gonna expand. So, yeah, especially my dowsing video. Anyway, <laughs> okay, mercury. So when the material came out of the stamp mill, it would get trapped and scrape it up, run it through a retort, everybody's happy. 
Also, there's a, uh, something about mercury people don't talk about called charging your mercury. Um, you can charge your mercury with a 9 volt battery. You'll, you'll, you'll go into the section and say, hey, I'm looking for stump out. Stump out, you pour it on these old uh, stumps of trees and it eats it all away. Yeah. It's, that's basically what it is. And so you can use that. And like I said, in the old days, I used to use... I could spend an hour talking about aquaregia and I don't really recommend it, but I knew somebody would ask about it. Yeah. When are you going to take us all out in the field? Okay, I get that question a lot. When am I going to take people out and show them hands-on? Yeah. I'm glad you all came out. I appreciate each and every one of you. See you in about a month or two. How's that sound? A month or two. <laughs>